Gallagher, Maine, one day, and I had a guy that was mowing my lawn, and he yelled through my window, "Hey, are you playing Gallagher in there?" And I was like, "Oh yeah." He's like, "How many games do you have?" I was like, "Fifty, sixty games." But I was talking about Maine, and I had sixty wrongs on the Maine. So he's like, "Oh my God, I can't believe you have so many, so many machines. Let me come inside and take a look." So when he comes inside, he's looking at everything but the computer, and he's like. I hear the Galaga, I don't see it. Where is it? And I was like, it's right here on the computer. He was like, wait a second. You're talking about playing on the computer? And I was like, yeah. He was like, lame. He's like, I have the real deal. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, I have like 15 games in my house. And I was like, bull crap. He's like, no, I have 15 games in my house. And I was like, you know what, dude? Stop cutting my lawn. Get in your car. I'm going to follow you to your house right now. And I was like, as far as I know, you're full of shit. Oops. And he's like, he's like, um, no, you'll see, man. Uh, you'll see. I have 10, 15 games. I think you're going to be blown away. Anyway, this is something that I don't tell very many people, but I was following him to his house, and I was livid. I was, like, going off. This guy, how could this guy have games and I can't have games? I'm doing well in life. He's mowing my lawns, and he can afford games, and I can't afford games? There's something wrong here, right? And I was like, if this is true... My life stinks, right? I'm just, anything negative you could think of, I was saying it. When I showed up there, I was crossing my fingers, hoping that it wasn't going to be the case that he has a house full of games. Opens the door, boom. His entire living room was just games. Asteroids, you know, Junior Pac-Man, Galaga, and I was like, I was like, this, this guy's name was Todd, by the way. I was like, Todd, um... How can you afford this? I mean, these games got to be a couple of thousand dollars. He said, no, they're a hundred dollars. And I was like, what do you mean a hundred dollars? He's like, look at the newspaper right now. So he handed me a newspaper and it said, arcade games for sale, a hundred dollars each. He's like, call, I was like, he's like, I bought the games from this specific guy. Uh, his name is Skip. And I was like, All right, I'm going to call Skip right now. I called Skip. He said he had about 30, 40 games in his house. I drove over there. And um, I bought two games from $100 each. And um, loaded them up in my truck and brought them home. My wife was like, what are you doing? And I was like, look, I own two arcade machines. Could you believe it? She's like, who cares, right? So we go lay down and we're sleeping, trying to sleep. I was trying to sleep. I couldn't sleep. All I was thinking about was those two games that were in my garage. And I left them on, by the way, because I wanted to make sure that they were going to run all night. I got up at like 1 o'clock and I, was, I walked into, the room, in, into that garage and I was staring at the two games and I was like, I gotta fill up my entire garage with these games. And my wife goes walking in and she's like, what's going on? She's, I said, I can't believe that I have these games. And um, tomorrow I'm gonna go back to Skip's house and buy a few more games. And she's like, all right, just don't get out of hand. And long story short, she went to Kansas and I bought 40 games in two weeks and I fill up the entire garage. And since she was in Kansas, I said, the heck with it. I took all our furniture out of our house and I put it in the garage and I filled my entire house up with games. So I had nowhere to sit in my house, but I had games everywhere you can see. And when she came home, she was like, she wanted to strangle me, you know? And I was like, um, I'm not going to move them. And I, I know you're not going to move them, so I think they're staying here. And my wife was like, you know, she started going off on me and stuff. And eventually we got to a point where. I brought some furniture back, but the games did get to stay in the house. And uh, we, I bought a second house afterwards, knowing that I'm going to have a game room built. So uh, in Florida, I was able to fit 25 games in a little room that we built next to the house. We built a brand new house with a, with a game room section. Mm -hmm. And when we moved here, we had to have a house with a walkout and a lot of space because I went from having 20, 30 games to having 180 games uh, within a couple of years, and I had like a couple of storage units full. My my parents' two-car garage was full. We had a three-car garage that was full, plus the games in the house and the games that were in the game room. So, what do you think? What What do you think got set off when you bumped into these games? I mean, that that sounds like heroin, <laughs> right? I mean, it just sounds like somebody going like, what? Give me all of this until I overdose. <laughs> yeah. And so obviously there's an attachment there. I mean, what do you think? What was going through? Like, what do you think it is? I mean, because that that is that is very that's a very radical 
change upon learning of something, you know, that's like learning that there's mountain climbing and you're on Mount Everest within a month, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, what it was, man, is, uh, like I said, I mean, it was like, I guess, bringing back the childhood in a way. And at the same time, it was like, you remember like having the Atari and then a game was going to come out. For example, Lock and Chase. This is a perfect example of what happened to me. Lock and Chase was going to come out, and I used to love Lock and Chase. It was like, it was like Pac-Man, but it was a little bit different. And I liked the music on it and stuff. So when, when the Atari announced it was going to come out, there was an ad with pictures on it, and uh, it was awful looking. And I was like, you know, this can't be the actual game. So I'm going to actually buy this game when it comes out. I bugged my parents, and they came out. We went out. I think, I think it was made by Mattel. We bought it, and I plugged it in, and sure enough, it was the same crappy game that was in the picture. And I was like, this doesn't even look like um, uh, the real Lock and Chase. It's a little dude running. And I was like, remember that iconic running man, kind of like on Berserk or something? That's what the characters look like on that game. And I was like, that's not what Lock and Chase looks like. So to me, like the days of like ColecoVision and Television and Atari, I was trying to buy those games because they were supposed to mimic the arcade versions, right? But they were never quite as good. Now I actually had the real deal. So you can't say this arcade game isn't as good as the arcade game because it's exactly the same thing. I mean, I was buying the real thing and they played exactly like the real thing. So instead of having like a hundred cartridges, I had a hundred real games. Yeah, they take up a lot of space, but you know, one thing to tell you that's kind of like, it's going to be different sounding is that I also knew there was a value to them. I always said to myself, if this hobby, um, if everybody was into it the way I'm into it, there has to be a value to this stuff. So I started buying games because I was like, okay, look, I just bought this game for a hundred bucks, but on eBay and on the news groups, people are telling me this game's worth a thousand dollars. What's wrong with buying 40 games? For, for 400 bucks or 500 bucks or whatever I paid for them, even 4,000 bucks, and they were worth $20,000. I saw it as like something that, it was a no-lose situation. As a matter of fact, that's the main reason why my wife said it's okay for me to keep them. Because she was seeing that I would buy five games and I'd sell three of them, and then with, those, with the money from the three, I was able to buy ten other games. You know, so she had no problem with me because she felt like I was kind of like, gradually building up wealth as well as really enjoying myself with what I was doing. Everything insured? <laughs> you know, everything's insured because when I first moved here, well, you know, we just kind of did it. You know what I mean? So yeah, everything's insured. All right. um, let's see. So, um, I mean, you have an Ultracade, right? Yeah. Um, 